Welcome to the final episode in our limited series, Small Living. If you've enjoyed this series, Small Living will continue to deliver inspiration and ideas from our favorite architects, designers, and creators on our website, www.nevertosmall.com. In this final episode of Small Living, Benita Larshan is back to teach us how to better organize our bathroom drawers. We learn about fertilizing our plants with Jason from Plant Society. And Celeste chats to Jean Graham of Winter Architecture about her design philosophy and her approach to the Torquay compartment department. First up, creative florist Melanie of Cecilia Fox teaches us how to make an arrangement using only foliage and greenery. Hi, my name's Melanie and I'm a florist from Cecilia Fox. Today I'm going to show you how to make an arrangement entirely out of foliage and greenery um, in a bowl, something like this. I'm going to fill this up with water now and you can fill it about three quarters of the way up. We can always add more water later. And I'm going to show you how to make a grid with some sticky tape. So this is just so the flowers don't fall out and you've got the capacity to use something with a really wide mouth. Sticky tape. So I'm literally just making a grid. I'm gonna put about three pieces across that way and about three the opposite way. Oh, maybe I'm just gonna do two that way. Uh, you can use any foliage that you like. Just think about the shapes and the texture and the colors of the different things that you're gonna use. We're gonna start with the geranium. Make sure you give everything a snip with a nice sharp angle, especially if they're woody stems. And because we've got our little grid here, we can put things in pretty simply and they'll stay where we want them to stay. This is fijol leaves. And it's really nice when things come cascading out of your bowl. So don't worry about things poking up. As long as they're in the water, they're gonna be drinking. Um, I really love that these leaves have the silver underside, so I really want to accentuate that. I'm gonna keep going, popping these in. Now, I've got these beautiful nasturtium leaves. They always remind me of water lilies. I'm gonna put in these nasturtium leaves and try and leave some space around them so we can really see the form of the leaf. So we're really just layering these different textures and colors. I'm gonna put in some of this grass. I'm just gonna bunch it together. I'm gonna do some of the other grasses coming out this way. So we've got some nice line. You can really use any leaves or greenery that you find around. Herbs are really great. I'm gonna use some rosemary. I love the fragrance of rosemary. It really fills your home. The other thing that is really important to do is to make sure that um, any of the foliage that you're using, you take off any leaves that are gonna be um, below the surface of the water. You don't wanna end up with um, a smelly bowl of rotting leaves. I'm making this arrangement all round, so when I'm finished, I'll turn it around as well, so it looks nice from every direction. You're gonna know when to stop when um, you feel like stopping. I'm gonna turn this around so you can see what I've done on this side as well. I've created like a little um, moment here with this beautiful silver foliage, grouped it really beautifully there. So here we are, here we have the finished product. 
You can see how all of the different textures and colours really come into play. The grass has really beautiful movement. This geranium is, has a really lovely um, burgundy vein through it there. Um, the rosemary has a beautiful fragrance and these lovely small leaves. I really hope that you've enjoyed um, making this foliage arrangement with me today. Um, be bold and get out there and make something for your table today. My name is Benita Larsson. I'm from Stockholm, Sweden. I create videos for my namesake channel on minimalism, organization and the Scandinavian lifestyle. I'm a minimalist, but when it comes to the bathroom, it's hard to keep things super minimal. There are things you need and use daily and weekly and you want them accessible. Make sure your toiletries are fresh and haven't expired. Do away with anything that smells funky, has changed textures, or if they're older than the expiration time stated on the product. It's that little pot symbol at the back that says for instance 12M for 12 months after you crack it open. Sort like with like or sort by how you use the product. Hair ties can obviously all go together, but then you might want to keep all the face products together, all hair products together and body products together instead of all creams, regardless of what they're for. This way you have all the items easily accessible when you're getting ready. My favorite products for bathroom organization are these Muji containers. I've had them for years. They come in various sizes and you can easily Tetris them into your drawer or stack them on a shelf. For more videos like this, visit my channel, Benita Larsson, where I share all things Scandinavian from my apartment here in Stockholm and beyond. This episode of Small Living is sponsored by Raycon. Raycon makes really good earbuds. As people who are into small but beautifully designed things, these tick a lot of boxes and don't cost the world. We've been spending a lot of time on video calls and listening to podcasts and music at the moment, probably like you. And we've got to say, Raycon's everyday E25 earbuds do a great job. They look good, but most importantly, they have six hours of playtime and easy Bluetooth pairing. If you're anything like us, you may misplace things. The everyday E25 earbuds come in a great little charging case, which keeps them right where we want them, when we need them. If you're on the lookout for a new pair of Bluetooth earbuds, Raycon earbuds start at about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market, so they're well worth a look. Thanks to Raycon, you can get 15% off your pair of everyday E25 earbuds. Go to buyraycon.com slash never too small. And thanks to Raycon for supporting Never Too Small and Small Living. So not everyone wants an indoor jungle with hundreds of plants, but often you will want one big specimen to really take control of the space. Um, and that's where you might want an indoor tree. So just remember that for an indoor tree, you need bright light because naturally trees need full sun to harsh light. Um, and so choose your plants accordingly for your apartment. We've got here a lady palm, which is a really hardy, hardy palm. It doesn't have a tree form as such, but it clusters and gets taller to form that tree canopy. We've got, um, one of my favorite is an umbrella plant. So these can grow quite tall, um, but also have a beautiful leaf form to them. And then behind me, we have um, the fiddle leaf fig, which is quite a popular one. Um, we've seen it um, in homes quite recently for the last few years. It is slightly temperamental, but if you're looking after it the right way, um, you'll see your fiddle leaves grow to the height this one is at, or even hit the ceiling. To keep your plants happy at home, um, it's really important to fertilise them and feed them with nutrients. Um, that comes in a range of forms. So we've got, um, my go-to is rock dust, which is an organic um, nutrient booster. Um, something similar is slow release fertiliser. You can buy it at any store. Um, but rock dust is organic, um, which for myself is really important. Um, this is what it looks like, it's granules, it's solid, it breaks down over time. And then we've got um, things that are easier 
if you are in a small space and don't want to have a full bag. Um, indoor spray, spray, which is really great for foliage. Um, and then also a liquid food is really important during the growing season. So the growing season is the warm months, so it's from spring to summer. And that's when you really want to feed your indoor plants, your tropical plants, because that's when they're really thriving. Um, in winter, they're dormant. So it's important not to feed them in winter. And how to apply it um, is quite straightforward. You've got your rock dust here. And all we need to do is put uh, it on the surface um, and refer to the packaging for the dosage rate as well. Um, you sprinkle it on and then we just simply water it in after we've done that. Another way to feed is liquid, like I mentioned, and that's a few droplets into the water. Um, the advantage of liquid fertilizer is that it absorbs faster into the root system. Um, but remember that it's concentrate generally, so it's important to dilute it in a watering can. Um, and we can just water it through the top there. Um, I would do this every six months or so um, when it comes to your solid fertilizer and that's the start of spring and then um, autumn. And then for your liquid fertilizer, you can do that in the warmer uh, months and you can water every two weeks or so. Thanks for tuning in to learn more about greenery within your home. If you are after more information, head to our website. It's www.theplantsociety.com.au. Hi, my name is Celeste and today I'm speaking with Jean Graham, founder and director of Winter Architecture. Winter architecture projects are synonymous with easy living. Paired back interiors and quality materials allow Jean's work to become understated yet highly functional backdrops for the different needs of her clients. Hi Jean, how are you? Yeah, good, how are you? Really well, thanks. What kind of experiences did you have before setting up Winter Architecture in terms of working in teams? Did you work for big practices? Uh, yeah, I worked for many types of practices, small and large, and at uh, various times interstate and then internationally, mostly commercial scale, and then a few residential projects. Tell us about the first small project you worked on. Yeah, so we've done a few tiny extensions to existing homes um, and renovations and alterations but this the talking compartment was particularly unique in that um, we had very low budget and the client had a family and they were living there and they're still living there um, and they were living there during the build so and they participated in the build heavily so they were able to put a lot of work into it so there's quite a lot of IKEA um, and it is a low budget, but most, probably one third of it was the materials. The two thirds was um, myself and also uh, the builder, Kev, who came in and did some work. So the other interesting thing about that is there wasn't any kitchens or bathrooms associated with it. It's mostly just groanery. And basically thinking about what space there is and what space you need and trying to cleverly pl place it all together so that it can what, what would be a hallway actually functions as um, as the heart of the home as opposed to a separate hall that's just completely designated for walking intermittently and also changing the perceptions about what is a lounge room and then what is a bedroom, especially when it's a seaside area and there's not much space. So the master bedroom is actually also the lounge room, um, day bed area. How can we think more cleverly about smaller spaces? You mentioned sort of thinking about spaces as having maybe a multi-function or, or dual function. Yeah. What are some other ways that we can make small spaces work a bit harder for us? I think a lot of people uh, are starting to get on board with this less is more and having um, a curated existence as opposed to a cramped and poured lifestyle like how many lounge rooms do you really need? How many dining rooms? The, how often do guests come and stay? What is more important? Quality of light, quality of air, having a nice place to dwell or having these like, kind of rooms that aren't really necessary and thinking perhaps if you were doing a renovation on yourself, if you were to engage a, a professional to help you, you might be able to find, you might find that it costs you less because you'll get quality products, 
great ideas without actually perhaps much work at all. It might be very small work and small moves. So the toilet compartment apartment, we only moved a door slightly and then we relocated another door once, but that's all we really did to the main structure. We kept the bathroom, we kept the kitchen. Sure, we painted it or, or applied some additional joinery around it, made some logic for the flow, but you don't necessarily have to do much to do a lot. Many never too small subscribers live in small apartments or spaces. Uh, what are some easy things that we can do at home, be it in our own homes that we own or ones that we rent, uh, to make our small spaces more functional and more enjoyable? I think it's important to focus on not what you want or what you think you need to have in the space and more how you live and what you want to have from the space. So if, you're a, if you like to be at the dining table with your family, then the dining table and the dining room needs to be the focus. But if you are all about sitting around together in the lounge suite, then that needs to be the focus. And so perhaps you turn the dining room table into the island bench of the kitchen and it creates sort of a semi-formal, informal, and it can be, can be either of those things. So then you sort of, you just, you, you compromise on what it is that you may not necessarily need so that you can focus and get, say, a really beautiful sofa if you're celebrating the lounge space instead of an IKEA sofa and then a, a sort of good table but nothing's really better off focusing on one thing. What common mistakes do people make when setting up or renovating their small apartments? I think the problem most people have is that they, they get a space and they're really excited and they want to, they just go, yeah, I want to get this, I want to get that, I want to do this. They might start pulling things down and then start work immediately and they don't tend to, to have a good idea about what things truly cost or how long things will take. Um, so I think it's important to, to be a little bit more patient and, and make sure you take the time to work with your designer to make sure that the space works for your needs because at the end of the day the the old rule of thumb is to measure twice and cut once uh, and I think a lot of home renovators or people who want to just go in straight straight at it tend to just go in and then they spend more money and then the problem is that you could have spent that money on better quality furniture or, or putting the kitchen in a new spot which might have been much better for your flow and your life. Jean, thank you so much for speaking with us today. It was so interesting to hear your story. While this is the last episode of Small Living on our YouTube channel, you'll be able to find more content on our website, www.nevertosmall.com. To see more of our regular content, subscribe to the channel and click the bell to receive updates and notifications on our latest episodes.